In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the expected range of a stock given the implied volatility and the confidence level. Well, first, let's talk about implied volatility. Implied volatility can help you determine the magnitude of a stock's future price changes as implied by the prices of the options. When implied volatility goes up, the value of option prices go up. When implied volatility goes down, the value of option prices, that is call and put options, they go down. So for instance, let's say we have stock ABC, and let's say it's trading at $100. The 110 call might be worth $1.50 given an implied volatility of 20%. Now let's say we have another stock, stock XYZ, which is trading at the same price, $100. And let's say the implied volatility for that stock is 37%. The 110 call is going to be more expensive. It could be 273 for instance. So what you need to understand is that when implied volatility is high, option prices are high. When implied volatility is low, option prices are low. But in this video, we're going to talk about how to use implied volatility to see how far the price of a stock can change with a 68% confidence level. The formula that we're going to use is the stock price times the implied volatility times the square root of the days to expiration divided by 365. And this will give us the movement within one standard deviation from the mean. Now, just to review some things from statistics, let's assume that we have a standard normal distribution. And in the middle, we have the mean. And then to the right, one standard deviation away from the mean. And to the left, one standard deviation away from it. So there is a 34% chance that the stock will be between the mean and plus one standard deviation from the mean. And there's a 34% chance that it will be between this range, negative one standard deviation from the mean. So there's a 68% chance that the stock will be within plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. And we're gonna calculate the price movement of the stock with a 68% confidence level, that is within one standard deviation from the mean. So in this example, the price of the stock is $200. The implied volatility is 30%, but we need to convert that to a decimal. So dividing that by 100, that's 0 0.30. And we're dealing with the one year call options. So one year is 365 days. And then this will give us the answer. So this basically cancels out to one. So it's simply 30% of $200, which is 60. So within one year, the price of the stock is estimated to move plus or minus $60 from the mean. The mean is going to be the current price of the stock. So 200 minus 60 is 140, 200 plus 60 is 260. So within one year, it's expected that stock XYZ will be somewhere between 140 and 260. Now, it's not a guarantee, but the confidence level is 68%. That means that there's a 68% chance that stock XYZ will be trading somewhere between these two prices one year from now. Now, there's a 32% chance that it's going to be outside of that range. And so when dealing with statistics, you need to talk about probabilities. Now let's work on another example problem. Stock ABC is trading at $150. The 30-day options have an average implied volatility of 42%. Calculate the expected range of the stock price with a 68% confidence level. So let's use the same formula. So it's going to be the price of the stock 
times the implied volatility times the square root of the days to expiration divided by 365. And that'll give us the value of just one standard deviation. So the stock is trading at a price of $150. The implied volatility is 42%. So as a decimal, that's 0.42. Now we're dealing with a 30-day option. So that option is going to expire in 30 days divided by 365 days. 30 divided by 365, that's 0 0.08219. If we take the square root of that number, we get 0 0.286691 multiplied by 0 0.42 times 150. So one standard deviation represents a price of $18.06. So this means that there is a 68% chance that the price of the stock will be within $18 from the mean. So if we take 150 subtracted by $18.06, we're going to get the lower side of this range, which is $131.94. And then if we add 150 and 18.06, that's going to be $168.06. So this particular stock is going to be trading, well, at least there's a 68% chance, we can't speak with a guarantee, but there is a 68% chance that stock ABC will be somewhere between $131 and $168 within 30 days. And there's a 32% chance that it's going to be outside of that range. So that's how you can calculate the expected range of a stock if you know the implied volatility and the confidence level. Now, just a basic review of statistics. Let's go back to the standard normal distribution. Because you may want to adjust the confidence level. So here is our mean x bar. This is one standard deviation. And then here, this will be two standard deviations. Then this will be three standard deviations. By the way, for those of you who want more video content on stocks, options, and other concepts related to those two things, when you get a chance, check out the links in the description section below. I'll be posting more video content in that area for those of you who might be interested. So let's get back to this video. So first, let me extend this graph a bit. Now, based on the standard normal distribution, there is a 68% chance, uh, let me say that again. There is a 68% chance that some event will fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Now, there's a 95% chance that in the case of stocks, the stock price will be within two standard deviations from the mean or the current price of the stock. And now I'm running out of space. But there's a 99.7% chance that it's going to be within three standard deviations of the mean. Now the area under the curve for the standard normal distribution is one. So within one standard deviation, the area is 0.68. The area represents the probability that the event will occur within one standard deviation of the mean. Within two standard deviations, the total area is 0.95. So that will be the area of all of this. And so now you know how to determine the expected range based on a 68% confidence level, a 95% confidence level, and a 99.7% confidence level. So for a 68% confidence level, you just got to find a range within one standard deviation of the mean. And you have the formula to calculate the value of one standard deviation. For a 95% confidence level, you simply need to determine the range within two standard deviations from the mean. And for a 99.7% confidence level, you need to do so within three standard deviations from the mean. 
So that's it for this video. Now you know how to calculate the uh, stock's expected move or expected range for a certain time frame given the implied volatility. Thanks for watching.